Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode in my series about the Dragon Knight, the custom class that I created for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, which is available for download or purchase uh, on the DMs Guild, which links will be in the doobly-doo. Um, uh, this whole video series is, is really designed to give you guys a better idea uh, about the thought process behind a lot of the abilities uh, and just... Uh, how I envision the class being played. Um, I'm hoping by making these videos that it will inspire a lot more people, first of all, to, to play the class, because I think it's a really good class, and possibly uh, get other people to create custom content as well. I think the DMs Guild is just a brilliant way uh, to get more and more really cool options uh, into the game itself. So, uh, the uh, uh, class, uh, or the calling that I'm going to be uh, talking about today uh, is going to be the Defender. Uh, the Defender is the defense-based um, character class, or uh, Draconic Calling for the Dragon Knight. This is the Dragon Knight that's supposed to wander in and keep all his friends alive and uh, piss off the bad guys because they can't kill him. Like He's just designed to be there to take damage. Uh, he's not designed to do a ton of damage, but I wanted him to play very different from your other uh, classes. Um, one of the things that uh, my, my first tabletop version of Dungeons & Dragons was 4th edition. And uh, in 4th edition, they had four uh, types of classes. Uh, I can't even remember. I think they were called focuses. I'll be able to tell you in about two seconds here. Do, do, do. Roles. They had uh, four different roles that a class could fall into. Uh, you had leaders, strikers, controllers, and defenders. Uh, and each one meant that the class played very differently from uh, other roles. The defender role was really designed to be the guy that, that took damages. Uh, most uh, things in the defender role from 4th edition uh, would have the ability to mark targets, which would kind of force them to attack. Uh, and there's a bunch of other things like they were just designed to take damage. And that's what the Draconic Calling Defender was designed to do. So I really don't think uh, there are too many classes that can do that. I mean, Barbarians can take a hit a lot. And Fighters uh, fighters and Paladins uh, have the ability to really make themselves very difficult to hit. Uh, but beyond the Battlemaster Fighter, uh, there really aren't that many abilities that um, kind of protect... Uh, your allies uh, from damage and things like that. Like the Battlemaster Fighter has a couple different maneuvers they can do. But other than that, it's not something that exists in 4th edition. That's what I wanted to kind of fix with the Defender. Um, the first things first was uh, the Paired Shields. Uh, I stole this from Dark Souls. 100% uh, that's what it was. In Dark Souls 2, there's actually a creature that you find um, later in the game where when you first come up to them, they just look like a wall. But what it is, is they have two shields that they're clasping together. Uh, and when you finally piss them off enough, they come up and they actually try and kill you with their shields. Uh, it's a cool uh, uh, it's a cool concept. There are actually players in Dark Souls 2 that use that uh, for PvP and, and stuff like that. Um, and I like that idea. I like the idea of having a shield on each uh, arm and using a shield as an offensive weapon as opposed to just purely defensive. And so that's what it was designed for. Um, I specifically made it so that instead of having to transform two different shields, uh, it was one to deal with the fact that magic shields in D&D are not designed to be offensive weapons and are not designed to be wielded together. So to prevent uh, min-maxers from kind of abusing it by using two different magic shields uh, and, and getting benefits that they're not really supposed to be able to have, uh, that's why even though it's technically two weapons, um, it, uh, it only uses one weapon to make the transformation and then splits it in half. I also made sure that the two halves have to be used together. Um, again, to prevent people from, from taking this and using half of it and then using another weapon to get extra damage, it's not what the class is designed for. It's, it's designed to, you know, have that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's the, the whole concept behind it is using these paired shields to do cool shit. Um, defensive, offensive. Um, this uh, uh, this was specifically designed, uh, if you read the blurb in the front, 
uh, of the uh, uh, the very beginning of the class document where it describes the three different Dragon Knights. Uh, defensive offensive was meant to work in the way that it's described there, where um, the uh, Dragon Knight comes up and he just clasps his shields and he takes the blunt of the attack and everyone around him takes less damage. Um, I did it specifically of anyone within 10 feet to avoid the idea behind having to have a mini and having to get really specific about, well, you know, if he provides cover, or does this, blah, 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 blah. No, it was just, it was just simpler to make anyone within 10 feet. Uh, and we can claim that, you know, a field goes out when he uses this. But again, this really defines how the class is supposed to be played. Um, when the class is played well, he will move around, uh, the dragon uh, uh, defender will move around and make sure that when you're facing someone powerful like a caster or something, that they will try to be uh, within 10 feet of as many of their allies as possible, which is actually the opposite of what most uh, parties will do when faced with a wizard that they're fighting against. They will spread out as much as they can uh, in order to not get caught in a fireball. This way, uh, they can actually sit there and, and the uh, defender itself becomes a very, very integral part of the party even though they're probably not going to be doing a ton of damage, they're going to keep their party alive. Um, Ricochet Shield, it's the Captain America move. It's Captain America. It's 100% what it is. I wanted a cool dragon attack for them. Uh, and it's just it's Captain America. That's it's all it is, is I'm like, I want them to do something cool. Uh, and so it uses the shield as an offensive weapon. And that's, that's the basis of this class, is you should be defending and attacking... Uh, at the same time. And I think Ricochet Shield is the perfect example of that, where you use this defensive weapon to beat the snot out of people. Uh, and I just, I think it's cool from a, uh, uh, just from like a visual perspective. I think it's cool to have this guy in like full armor with these two like spiky shields just go up and go, boom, and he goes, boom, boom, boom. I just think that's awesome. Um, so, Paired Shield Mastery. Uh, level six, every uh, group has what's called their mastery skill of their weapon, and it changes how things do. Um, this one specifically uh, was designed to... Because uh, right now it's kind of a dual-wielding class where you can hit with the shield and you can hit with the offhand shield. Uh, it was designed to give them uh, a reason to use the shields together. Because again, that's what the class is designed to do, is to use the shields together. So... Uh, not only does it do some extra damage, uh, but you can also use it for a little bit of battlefield control. I'll talk more about the, the control aspects uh, with the final class uh, um, uh, that I made, the, the, the first expansion, uh, the, uh, the Warlord, um, simply because that's what that class is designed to do. But this was designed to use a little bit of that. One of the things that 4th edition focused on that, 5th edition and, and all the other editions didn't, uh, was the controller class didn't really do damage. They didn't heal people. They didn't protect people. Their entire purpose was to control the battlefield, to set people up for better attacks, to move opponents around, to get advantage on opponents, um, uh, things like that. Like, that was the whole purpose of it. Uh, and so, Paired Shield Mastery, um, the second aspect where they can kind of sit there and, and hit with it, um, was designed to give you a little bit of that control back where you could knock someone over. I, a very, very useful skill to have because it means melee attacks against that creature have advantage. So that's what it was designed for. Uh, Draconic Charge, again, was very much based on a combination of control aspects and using a defensive weapon as an offensive weapon. They just charge through people. And again, it fits with the class. Um, Da, da, da. And just like everything else for this level, it's a saving throw um, because you're you're charging in. So there, the idea behind it is you have to dodge out of the way. Um, I added on the little caveat of anyone that fails gets dragged along with you to again give that control aspect to it um, because it, it it lets you rearrange the battlefield. It lets you move where things are. Um, if you've got you know, an ally that is grappled or, or surrounded by bad guys, you can use this dra uh, dragon charge to just go through all of them and help out and protect your ally. Um, 
Improved intuition. I've actually had somebody tell the, uh, tell me that this is their favorite thing uh, uh, in Dungeons and Dragons ever. They just think this is the coolest thing. Um, every class has something that improves uh, them. Their their tenth level ability is something that improves outside of combat. Um, it's designed to give you uh, something you can do uh, for the other two pillars of fifth edition. Uh, and this one uh, gives you uh, uh, insight. I think insight is a vastly underused uh, ability, and I think there's so much more to insight uh, that you could do. And so that's what this was designed for. It was designed um, from the idea, like, I'm a salesman. Uh, that's what I've done for a while. Uh, and one of the reasons I was as good a salesman as I was was I could read people like that. I knew exactly what they were interested in. And as I was talking, I would change my pitch based on what their interests, uh, interests were. Um, and that's what this is designed to do is basically give someone the ability to read someone, uh, give a character the ability to read someone. And because they understand that person better, they'll better be able to persuade them or lie to them. Uh, and I think that's something that they don't have anything in, in fifth edition right now that lets you do that uh, beyond house ruling something. So I, I put that specifically in because in combat, to be on the defensive, you're reading your opponent, um, and, and, and that's how you survive. It's not so much like just being really, really tough. It's understanding your opponent and knowing where they're going to swing and being able to defend against it. So I thought it just fit really well with the defender. Um, payback strike. Uh, I, I, again, uh, this is... Uh, uh, this is, again, just designed to be something to give it that little bit more versatility uh, and to really make it uh, threatening to the rest of the guys. Give the bad guys a reason to focus on this person. Um, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was specifically designed that if someone you know, takes a swing at you and they miss, you can go, ha <laughs> ha, boom. Um, and just give it that little bit extra uh, damage ability that it didn't have before. Um, again, everything else up to this uh, uh, point, the class itself has been very, very focused on defense and helping your allies. This is one that just kind of brings it back up to standard with uh, uh, the ability to do a little bit extra damage. And again, that little bit extra control aspect to it. Um, and then Draconic Resilience... Uh, again, was designed to bring it back to the idea of um, helping out your allies and just being that 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 character that keeps the team alive. Um, so uh, it gives them a boost in their AC, which can be invaluable. Uh, it gives them uh, resistance to uh, basically non-magical damage. Like it's it's designed, it was actually kind of inspired by, I think it was called Blossom Storm or Rose Storm in The Legend of Dragoon, which is, it's an extra shield for people. And it only lasts, uh, you know, basically for a turn. But for that turn, if you plan it correctly, can be the difference between uh, defeat and victory. You know, your, your team's in a, a really bad place. There's a lot of bad guys. You pop dragon skin, you protect them all from the worst of the damage, and then you clean house so that the next turn you can do something else. Um, so yeah, like that's that's the uh, that's the entirety of the defender. Again, it's it's designed to be that defender class. It's designed to be the class that doesn't really go out and do a ton of damage. It's it's there specifically to help the rest of your allies uh, deal with the bad shit that happens in a dungeon. So that is going to be all for me today. Uh, like I said before, feel free to check out the class, download it. You can download it for free. Uh, or you can decide to toss some money my way, whichever you prefer. Uh, links for all that in the doobly-doo. All right? That's all for me today. I'll see you guys next time. All right? Bye-bye.